That's nice. That's nice. Galatians 5, 6, say it after me. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. Say it again. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. So in order to experience everything that God's provided for us, we know that it takes faith. Y'all finish this verse. Without faith, it's impossible to please. Because whoever comes to him must what? Believe. Believe that he is and, and that he's a rewarder. Everyone say who? rewarder. Who's your rewarder of? That's Amen. right. Those who diligently seek him. So he has rewards for us, but our response has to be correct. And all of his rewards, guys, please write this down, are because of his love. His rewards are not because of your faith. His rewards are because of his love. Mm. That's really important. Mm. Because if you get your faith out in front of love, it's in the wrong order. Nobody has their underwear on outside of their jeans today. That'd Not be weird. Cool. That'd be so weird. Not cool. Right? There's an order to things. You might think, well, I have them on. Nobody puts their socks over their shoes. That'd be weird. Well, I have them on. The only place we do that is in the nursery when we put those smocks over our shoes because it protects the floor from being dirty so the babies are in there on the floor. Okay. No, it's not. Although that's a good idea. Hey, will you keep this? I shouldn't have brought it up here. None of y'all are getting married. That's for after this service. It ain't the season. Let me see them notebooks. If it I'm doing marriage season. counseling with you guys, we have a major problem. Major pro What is wrong with that church? <laughs> They're doing marriage counseling for the middle school. Okay. That's for after. All right. So, guys, there's an order. Turn to your neighbor say, get in order. That means love comes before faith. God's love for you is why you can walk by faith. Say it after me. God's love for me, God's love for me is why I can walk by faith. Is why I can walk by now, faith. if you try to walk by faith on your own, you can turn it into works. Mm -hmm. And works don't get any results. Faith in God gets results. So, guys, this is about understanding love on three levels. Can you write this down? It's not in your notes. You need to understand this love on three levels. Number one is God's love for you. Write it down. God's love for you. You have to understand this love on three levels. God's love for you. They'll put it on the screen for you. God's love for you. Oh, my hair looks so good. Yeah, it does. No, I didn't mean, that was my own conversation with myself because I just got my hair cut. It was like so long and like it wasn't laying right. And Looked my like guy. Planning an escape. What do you mean? Like tangled? Oh, I know, right? God's love for you, your love for God. Number two, your love for God. You've got to understand love on three levels God's love for you, your love for God is number two. God's love for you, your love for God. And number three, your love for others. Oh, that's good. If you're going to walk by faith, these three have to be working in your life. Now, how do you come to grow in your understanding of God's love? Who knows? We'll walk around with the microphone. How can you understand God's love for you more? Peyton. By reading the word and doing your quiet time. Yeah, spending time with him. Nice. Praying in the spirit. Yes, yeah, praying in the spirit. What else? Worship is a good one for that, everybody. Worship is a good one for that. Guys, he's already made his love available, but you have to pursue it. There was a movie that came out years and years ago. It's horrible. It's trash. It's so sad. I don't like sad movies. And so it's sad. So basically what happens is this husband dies, but before he dies, he left his wife like all of these like notes and these like treasures for her to find after he died. Like, I'm like, bro, I would rather. That's weird, bro. How's she supposed to get over it? Exactly. But, but basically, there are all these little reminders that were laid up for her, for her to discover. Well, guys, this word, Jesus did die, but he's just so awesome. He resurrected. Glory. But he did die, but he laid up so many things for us. But if we don't get, ever get in the word, we won't understand his love. See, his love, like, how do you develop love one for another? Like, somebody tell me. Like, how do you develop, like, quality time? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Um, 
Well, that was mine, but do yeah. you like another love language? Yeah. Like words of affirmation? Yeah. We develop love for each other by saying, like, don't you feel closer to people that say kind things to you? Yes. Like, you know that they, like, know your strengths, like they get you. You know what I mean? So words of affirmation can develop intimacy. What else? One-on-one time. Yeah, one-on-one time. Even past quality time, just one-on-one. You had a friend in Bible school when we all hung out in groups. She did not want to hang out in groups. We just had to do, we had to do one-on-one, okay? Anyone else? How do we develop love one for each other? Giselle, you mad, bro? You mad? She don't have one. Though. Why are you messing with her? Bro? Okay, what, what are the other five love, love languages? What about gifts? Physical touch. Physical touch. You give them a little side hug, you know? That's it, nothing else. But you understand? You just tenderness that way. Okay, what about gifts? You bless people? How, how do you guys know that you love your friends? Give gifts. Okay, what else? Communication, yeah, just talking. Talking develops intimacy. Acts of service, doing nice, nice things for them. Oh, Buying out food the five love languages here. Yeah. All right. Okay, so guys, it's not in that exact same way in our relationship with God because we can't interact with him in the same way. But do you know where we can express our love for him? In his church. Amen. So when you do all of those things in your church, He's the head of the church, right down Colossians 1.18. Jesus is the head of the church. So when you do all of those things at church, that is developing intimacy with God. Like when you serve at your church, that doesn't just bless the people. That creates greater intimacy with God. It's just like we're reading in our adult Bible reading right now that when Jonathan died, remember David and Jonathan were like soulmates. They were good friends. And Jonathan and David made a covenant, and they promised each other to take care of even their family's family. Well, Jonathan is killed in battle with his dad, King Saul. It's like a horrible oh, thing. David was not happy about and it. And then when like the king dies and like they're running from their enemies, um, one of Jonathan's sons, Meshimetheth-ish, he, y'all, this is the worst ever, okay? Like his nurse grabs him, okay? It's not like Anastasia. Anastasia, they get out. I want to sing a song, but I'm not. Like, I'm just <laughs> like, I'm refraining She's myself. She's about to sing, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Who said don't? Who said? Which one of y'all? Get out. Get new church. New church. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, honestly, it escaped me the song that I wanted to sing. Um, Heart, don't fail me now. Courage, don't desert me. Don't hold back. Now that we're here, people always say life is full of choices. No one ever mentioned fear. <sighs> Doesn't Pastor Charity have such a great voice? Y'all. I used, to, I used to watch that movie and like sing that song in my living room like I was Anastasia. Have y'all seen that movie? No. <sighs> I, I missed that one. I wasn't it's called Anastasia. To see that. People always say, what, which one? Unbroken? That'll get you. That'll get you. Okay. So here's the thing his nurse grabs Meshimetheth, whatever his name is, drops him, yo, and now he becomes, like, crippled. Can you imagine? So, like, the handmaiden, like, drops him. He becomes crippled. Jonathan's dead. David hears about it. And he's like, listen, as long as there is a relative tied to Jonathan still alive, I'm going to take care of him. Yep. I'm going to take care of him because this promise has been made, right? That's my family. Okay, well, that's how God sees his church. So when you want, when you want to, like, people who are like, I just don't sense God's love, you don't go to church, bro. Mm -hmm. Or if you do, you just come in like you're not really a part of it. Like, God's love is active. It's an actual thing. And so when you express yourself in your church, you're doing that. Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these. He told his disciples at one point, they said, uh, when I like was in. When, when did we ever visit you when yeah. you were in prison? When did we ever clothe you when you were naked? When did we ever feed you when you were hungry? And what did he say? If you've done it unto the least of these, the least of these, amen, you've done it unto me. So any of these things that we do for others, that's how we show God. Guys, faith doesn't work without love. So what we challenge you guys to do on Wednesday night at the end of the service, which we're going to do again today, we're going to pray over it, is really like search your heart. 
If there's any people that you've kind of like just got a little, mm, and I need a heart. Could someone cut me a heart, please? Mm. Please, please. Mm. I wrote my people's names. On I need my, a heart. I should have done my own praying before. I think I wrote some people's names down, but I was leading y'all in the prayer, and then I didn't do my own praying. But we're going to do that. You're going to write the names of those people on your heart. Don't look at anyone else's heart. And we're going to put it up at the altar. We're throwing them away, actually. We could probably burn them, actually. I have, should I, do I already have a fire going? Perfect, because I have two fire appointments after this service before the marriage counseling. Thank God for so Ethan. He's anyway. a pyromaniac. Just kidding. I need a fire anyways. And so what we'll do is we'll go out the side. After we pray, we'll lay them at the altar. And then, um, should we, or do we just burn them? We don't need to lay them at the altar and then find your heart and then go let's, to the altar. Let's do one or the other. Prefer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. So let's go wow. through our notes. Let's go through our notes, and then you'll write the names on the heart. You'll understand what that means if you weren't here, okay? You guys want to go through the notes? Let's re-refresh. All right. In every situation, the question is, what does love require of me? Galatians 5, 6, faith works by love. Mark eleven twenty five. 25, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven, okay? John 13, 34 through 35, how are they going to know you're with me? By your cool buildings? No. By your church services? No. By the way that you dress? No. By the way that you worship? No. By your love for the lost? No. By your love one for another. Jesus said, that's how they're going to know you belong to me. By love one for another. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 outlines what this love looks like. So fill them in. Pastor Greg's going to give them to you for the ones that aren't listed. Number one, patience. Oh. Help me, Lord Jesus. Number two, kindness. How many of you would consider yourself kind? Ish. Ish. Number three, humility. Number four, manners. Five, self-sacrifice. Six, being quick to forgive. How many of you are good at that? How many of you could maybe grow in that area? Come on, somebody. Six, gentleness. No, sorry, seven. Eight, always believing the best. Mm. How many of you could grow in that area? Amen. Sometimes we let our minds think the worst. Love believes the best. Number nine, never losing hope. Pastor Jared, I think you're great at that. What? Never losing hope. When the rest of us have all given up. I sing, heart, don't fail me now. <laughs> Ten, never quitting. You know, all of us in our human nature, we have a propensity or a tendency to go the easy way. Right? But look at the requirements of this. Yeah. Love does not have easy requirements. But you know it's worth it? Well, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. Like, turn to your neighbor and say, I have what it takes. Anybody know where that's found? Romans 5.5, 5, write it down. The love, the love of, God of God has, has been, been shed abroad in your shed heart. Shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Romans Ghost. Romans 5.5. 5. So you have what it takes. Yeah. Turn to your another, other neighbor and say, you have what it takes. It's already there. So, like, if you have it and you don't use it, what is that? It starts with an L and ends with a Y. Lazy. L-A-Z-Y. Lazy. You ain't got no alibi. You, you lazy. lazy. You lazy. My songs are more upbeat. So, don't be lazy. But what I'm saying is, think about people who accomplish great things. Yeah. They don't just stumble upon greatness. They put right. in work. They work hard. Yeah. And love is something that is worth working at. Amen. So when you look at this list, there's no productivity in being negative or pessimistic, like, oh, I'm trash at all these things. There's no productivity. There's no advancement in that. But if you'll just say, you know what? I see that the word requires me to require more of myself. And then you do that. What happens? Pull out your chart. If you weren't here on Wednesday, because you want to fill this in. So you want to scale yourself or self-evaluate. How are you on all these things with your family, with your church family, with your friends, and with your enemies? 
Because Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48 says, you're familiar with the old written law, love your friend and the unwritten companion, hate your enemy, but I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the supple moves of prayer, for then you are working out of your true selves. He gives his best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless the good and the bad, the nice and the nasty. If all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Everyone say grow up. Grow up. Your kingdom subjects now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously towards others. Basically, you're to pray and love your enemies. Say love your enemies. Love my enemies. So pull out your chart. If you weren't here on Wednesday, go ahead and score yourself. If you are patient with your family, give yourself a check mark. If not, give yourself an X. Ooh. So go through there quickly. If you were here on Wednesday and you have your chart, pull it out. Let yourself be refreshed. Mm. Maybe make a star if you don't have your chart with you on your handout. If you were here on Wednesday and you don't have your chart with you, pull out this piece of paper, your notes, and then just put a, put a star next to the three that you need to work on. And you know it. You need to be more proficient in patience, kindness, humility, manners, self-sacrifice, being quick to forgive. Which one, which three are they? If you don't have your chart, which three do you need to be more proficient in? Proficient just means excellent. So go down the line. Sometimes it's easier for us to love our church family and our friends more than our family and our enemies. But you want to be across the board. You want to be the same. Right? If, you're, if your team can only win on the home court, that's a problem. Because there's a lot of away games. And if you treat everybody with kindness outside of your home, that's setting a big bad, pre big, bad precedent for when um, you get married and you have a family of your own. Okay, just a couple more minutes, and then we're going to slide through the rest of our notes. Everyone filling out their chart? Heart don't. I think that back row would like for me to sing while y'all do it. Heart don't fail me now. I love y'all so much. It's such a beautiful voice, Charity. Y'all, that soundtrack hits. Anastasia. It's not Disney, y'all. It's not Disney. Girls are girls in there, boys are boys. Just I think Dylan might be listening to it on the way home today. <laughs> He's definitely it not. It could happen. Okay. Ephesians 4.15 says that we should speak the truth in love. Yep. So love requires, let's pick up on our notes. If you're still filling out your chart, you can, or just hold it for uh, a few more minutes. Love requires confrontation and truth. A long time ago, one of my friends got a haircut, and they asked me what I thought of it, and I didn't like it. And I didn't say, oh, my gosh, it looks so good, because I know that's what they want to hear. I said, you know what? I sent them a picture of how their hair is that I really like, and I said, this is my favorite way that your hair is. I didn't say it's ugly. It looks like trash. I just, did, but I'm not going to, you can't lie. Guys, when do your words matter? If you're speaking to a symptom in your body, if you're commissioning the angels of God to encamp around and protect you, but you use your words casually and with sarcasm and with deceit every other time, you don't even believe yourself. That's broke. Like, your mouth's broke. So you have to be willing to confront. If your friend says, hey, blah, 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 I'm going to go do this, and you know that's not the right thing to do, you have to address it and say, hey, here's the thing. Like, you made a commitment that you weren't going to do that. What's up? Like, I love you. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I, I love you enough to tell you the truth. It's not like, if you don't tell the truth, it ain't love. If you're telling people just what they want to hear, that ain't love. You love yourself more than you love them because you're fearful Ooh. of what they think about you. That's the fear of man, Fact. and that's not real love. Well, they're going to get upset, and then they're going to go, like, badmouth me, bad me to everybody. You go to bed at night, and you know. You go to bed at night, and you know. That's why I say, I don't care who talks bad about me. Listen, they know. I got evidence in my phone, too. That ain't the last thing you text me, bro. Mm. I know you might have said some stuff, but you got to keep that stuff evidence. I keep it. 
listen, you're not going to be friends until I tell you the truth. And then when I tell you the truth, you're mad and you're offended. And you want to make me the problem. Guys, love people enough to tell them the truth no matter what. Even if it hurts. And if you're the kind of person that has somebody in your world that loves you enough to tell you the truth, just take it. Say, yeah, I own that. I wasn't doing that. I, I, I blew it there. Honestly, I know I said that, but I just, I, I was yielding to my flesh. Just own it. But don't get all prideful about it. Well, I appreciate you telling me, but you should have told me a different way. Listen, tell me however you tell me. If it isn't honest, it isn't love. James 3, 17, 3, 13 through 17 says where there's strife, there's confusion in every evil work. Right down next to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, strife makes you a baby. That's what Paul said. He said, I wanted to talk to you about deeper things. I want to go higher. Take me deeper. I want to go farther. You can't. Your spiritual maturity does not exceed your love walk. That's why it's not worth it. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care how mad you are. I love you, period. See, there's just so many songs. I love you, period. Do you love me, question mark? Please, please, exclamation point. I want to hold you in parentheses. It's for married people. It is a real song, y'all. I'm not making these up. I'm not that good. I'm not like a songwriter on the fly. These are songs. She's flowing now. It's, it's a song. Your love walk indicates your level of spiritual maturity. Well, I just want to grow up. I want to hear God's voice. I want to follow his plan. Walk in love. Get your chart out. Get your chart out. If you want to grow up, get your chart out. Your spiritual maturity is tied to your life of love. They just make me so mad. Stop letting them have that much power in your life. It's not worth it. Just forgive them. Let them go. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to write the names on there. Because honestly, guys, when I think about it, like, oh, it's a little scratchy in there. Like you've said you forgive them, but if they walk through the doors right there, fix your face. Real fast. Do you know what I mean? That's how I know, oh, there's a little something in there still. I've said I forgive them, but if they walk in, I would have to fix my face. I need to put them on the paper. Do you know what I'm saying? We're going to pray over it, and then we're going to burn it. So James 3, 9 through 10, James literally, half-brother of Jesus, he's like, listen, you guys are talking a good game, but then you're also bad-mouthing your brothers and sisters in Christ. Bitter and sweet cannot came, come out of the same fountain. That's right. That would be like turning on the faucet or like if, if you guys ever had those punch things at parties, it's like punch comes out and then George walks up and it's like throw up comes out. Uh. It's like, I just got punch out of that. And George is like, this is not punch, yo. This is throw up. That's what you do every time you come in here and you worship the, worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then you walk out of here and yeah, yeah, about so-and-so. Mm. It's the same thing. That is the exact same thing. So we said on Wednesday, it's two-faced to have the hypocrisies of others in your mouth as they, to have the hypocrisy of others in your mouth as they have them in their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they may not be doing the right stuff, but why is that in my mouth? How does that fix it? How does me talking about other people fix their life? It doesn't fix their life. Right. Just Pray. In these last few verses that I didn't really get to on Wednesday, but they're going to lead us into um, the fire, literally. Jude 22 through 23. Go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Everyone say, go easy. Go easy. Go after those who take the wrong way. Now, I want to clarify this. Write it in your notes next to Jude 22 through 23. Write it next to it. Go after them in prayer. Guys, you can't go after people face to face that you haven't first gone after in prayer. That's good. And then the Holy Spirit will show you, hey, go ahead and give them a call. Go ahead and hit them up. And sometimes you won't be led to do that. Why? Because they're not ready. And it would actually do more damage. But, but Jude is just saying, hey, there's a possibility, right? People walk away. Do you want them to be able to come back? Do you know what I'm saying? But if you're scratchy in your heart, then that, that hinders the, the flow of the Holy Spirit to draw them back. Right. 
right? So you go after them in prayer. It says, be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. See, that's why we're not picketing. That's why we're not mad at doctors that perform abortions. That's why we're not rude and condescending and critical to people who are in an alternative lifestyle, boys that want to be girls, girls that want to be boys. That's a spirit that they've yielded to, Mm -hmm. right? So we're not mad at people, but we take authority over the spirit in prayer because we don't want people to be bound. We want people to be free. It says, the sin itself stinks to high heaven. Luke chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said some powerful words. He said, love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Have any of you ever lent somebody some money and they said they would pay you back, but they didn't? Jesus said, lend and hope for nothing in return. If they pay you back, fine. If they don't, fine. So he goes on to say, and your reward shall be great. Everybody say, my reward, my reward will, be great. will be great. So he said, your reward shall be great, and you shall be children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So it goes right along with what Pastor Charity is saying, right? We're not like standing outside an abortion clinic screaming at the doctor when they come out. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's kind even to the unthankful. How many of us have been unthankful before? And yet he's still kind to us. So obviously, we want to be people of gratitude. We want to be thankful. But look, Jesus is teaching us how to live. The Bible says we'll be known by our what? Fruit, Fruit and our love okay. one for another. Amen? So Jesus gives us very clear instructions. He goes on to say, Be merciful as your Father is merciful. How many of you like it when somebody's merciful with you? Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you broke something accidentally. Have any of you ever broken something? And how many of you, like, you broke something and they were, like, super mean to you or super rude about it? Anybody? And they told you how much it cost and they were super... Okay. How many of you broke something and someone was merciful to you? Right? Maybe you've experienced both, but it says we should be merciful for our Father is merciful. Praise God. This is dealing with issues of the heart. You can memorize Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and and know the song. But if there's not love seen in your life, you're missing the point. That can be religion. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. Well, you're very good at being merciful, for sure. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. And blessed are those those who have been forgiven much. What? Love much. Love much. I've been forgiven much. James 5, 19 through 20, my dear friends, if you know people, turn to your neighbor and say, do you know people? If you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you are kind of like, you write them off? Na, na, na. Ooh, just a little bold, humble Christians in here. Just go and raise your hand real high. I write them off. You didn't have to do that, but okay. Lots of leaders. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so even though we say if you leave, you can come back, we don't really mean it because it kind of seems like it. Okay, um, don't write them off. You don't ever write people off, ever, 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 ever. It says don't write them off. Go after them. Now, you go after them where first? Go after them in prayer first, okay? You're not hitting them up, blowing up their phone. No, hit them up in prayer first. Hit them up in prayer. Get them back, and you will have rescued precious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. Jesus didn't go after the rich young ruler. The father didn't go after his prodigal son. You go after them in prayer. You have this attitude of love, and then if there's an opportunity, again, you run into them, and you know my heart and my conscience are clear. I can sincerely let the love of God flow through me and not my attitude, not judgment, not my past you know, hurts or offenses with them. So go ahead and play no strings. Pull out your red heart. On your red heart, you want to write down the names of people that you have either not forgiven. And if you did this on Wednesday, just write the names of the people that you did this with on Wednesday that the Holy Spirit revealed to your heart on the paper so that we can put them in the fire. And we're not burning those people, obviously. We're just burning the negative unforgiveness and and, and just... um bitterness, any sort of ugly feelings that we've had towards them, impatience, maybe we've written them off, whatever that is. So let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Father, right now.